Hi everyone, welcome to the Chaos Science Worker meeting today. Um, pretty light group because some of our science members couldn't make it. They have an all hands meeting, so it's just a couple of chaos members. So this meeting will probably be pretty short. Um, I've been kind of going through, so there was a in the minutes kind of this request to to if you recall from Melissa to do a worked model that she could potentially share with her community. Do you remember this conversation? I do, I do. And so, um, and the idea was is that through a worked model, um, it could be something that is shared with community members, you know, to kind of build narratives around how this model could be helpful. Do you remember, this was from like a couple of weeks ago. And so the model that we had kind of landed on was this contributor experience model or contributor community health. I just kind of called it contributor experience at this point. And I think there's gonna be some real challenges with having this as a worked model. Um, so the whole idea behind contributor experience, Don had provided some really nice links from the Kubernetes um, community just about, they have a contributor experience SIG. And you can kind of read the description there. So the idea here is um, just kind of helping to sustain community members, just to really help uh, reduce bottlenecks within the project. You know, so if like people are stumbling on particular things, trying to identify what those particular things are and remove them, um, they have some really, it's just, it's kind of a, a really deep set of things that they think about. And it's really pretty interesting to read. Um, so I tried to rework the narrative a little bit, particularly kind of relying on that Kubernetes description, because if somebody's already written something that I think is <laughs> well done, why don't we just go ahead and use that? Um, and then I added this part here is about, it plays an important role in recruiting and retaining members. Um, as well as kind of understanding where financial and in-kind resources should be applied. So it's, you know, if you think about it from a chaos perspective, we do this pretty regularly. If something's not working, you know, we ask, we try to remove it, or if there's something that seems like it needs a little bit more, um, you know, fuel, then we talk about how we can better support um, a particular area that seems to be working well. You know what I mean? So it's just, that was kind of that last sentence there. Um, I tried to rework uh, the user stories just to bring them down a little bit, uh, kind of from the experience, uh, the contributor experience lead perspective. And again, I think a lot of these should be pretty, um, pretty familiar, you know, even to us here in the Chaos Project, if we're not running a scientific community, I think the questions are quite similar. And take a look there, you know, like why you would care about uh, understanding the contributor experience within your community. So I think it's all good through there. Um, where I think one of the challenges that's going to come in in doing a worked model is, so for example, Elizabeth, like if I was to say we want to do this as a worked model in chaos, and I said these are the metrics that I want you to, <laughs> to gather, like each one of them is every single one of them is really based on, on uh, qualitative data. And so we, like you look at these and if you look at the metrics themselves, so like just do some interviews or just run a survey <laughs> and then tabulate the data. Now moving on to chat plant, platform inclusivity, do the same thing and same with communication transparency and same with discoverability of documentation and so on and so forth. So, I mean, to me, a model like this is, probably not going to go anywhere just because the amount of overhead that's required to actually gather a collection of what we have here is six <laughs> metrics that are based on surveys and interviews. Um, I, as an example, I mean, we ran a survey in the chaos project. <laughs> it just takes a long time to, to build the survey, to run the survey, uh, and to kind of tabulate the data. Matt, can I um, just yeah. ask a quick question? Would it be helpful at all if, as part of a metrics model like this, we put together a survey that would be comprehensive? Like across, like try to 
Um, Bring them all together and say, here's your survey? Or is that too much? That's, that's, a pretty, that's, that's a good idea. I mean, so we would say metrics in the model are these, and then here's a... Uh, here's some, here's the survey questions you could ask that would encompass all of those things. Yeah, that would kind of get over that initial like hurdle of having to honestly, like sometimes the hurdles can be low to create a total, like where somebody would have to like hmm. click on every one of the metrics. Yeah, go, yeah, that's, that's, that's an interesting idea. Um, I know that um, uh, Demetrius's team, the new people are working on a survey that, that is along those lines, isn't it, Elizabeth? Mm, I don't know about that. I'm talking about the um, Usenix stuff. Oh, that's very, very specific to um, harassment at academic conferences. That's all that that survey does. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I, that's an interesting idea. Do you think it would... Um, I like that idea. I don't know if it's going to help Melissa <laughs> because then we're basically saying you need to run the survey, you know, but maybe yeah. she can. I'm just wondering if, like, I don't know how else to get that data, mm -hmm. you know, the data that she cares about. So I don't know. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I like that idea. Maybe that's something that we can we can think about a little more yeah i like but i, I do I, I don't think we i've ever thought about that is just taking honestly it would only take you know 30 minutes to just kind of cut and paste from those hi don and then maybe pare down or see if we could mm -hmm. like, you know make it a little tighter because yeah. it might be kind of long at that point but yeah, yeah no that's i like that idea um okay so maybe um The survey. So, Don, we were talking about, we had talked last time, if you recall, about creating a worked model for Melissa so that she could kind of use it as a way to build narrative within her own community, you know, not just providing numbers. Um, and so, I had spent some time, it's just a quick recap here, kind of going through this. And by the way, I, I used the Kubernetes contributor experience kind of definition up here around, um, around that particular issue. Um, I have to say the Kubernetes documentation is amazing and how it's organized, it just kind of blows my mind every time I take a look at it and I don't understand how they're able to do it <laughs> with as many people as they have because it's, it's always really, it's just really tight and really organized. So there's a lot of great stuff in there, but ultimately off of the charter for this group, I just took that that quote right there at the top, just because I didn't think there was really any other reason to, to um, redo that. The challenge that I was having in creating a worked model was that many of the metrics that were in the model are based on uh, qualitative data. So they're from interviews and surveys. So like if you click on the mentorship one, it's like go interview your community. If you click on chat platform inclusivity, it's like run this survey to find out how inclusive people think that chat platforms are. Um, so then Elizabeth, so my concern was is that like a worked model, we can't really do it for Melissa, you know, in this particular case, she would need to run the surveys uh, herself. And Elizabeth yeah. had an idea that maybe we could spend a little bit of time, and I could do this offline, but kind of going through each one of these um, metrics and trying to build a single survey, as opposed to saying to somebody like, here are all the metrics, you go track down all the questions, and you yeah. build a survey, but maybe we could try to assemble something for people. Yeah, I really like that idea. I mean, for, for metrics models like this that have a lot of survey components, mm -hmm. I think it would be great if we could put together like a just a starting point for a survey. They can customize it to their to their needs. Exactly. Um, the other thing we talked about doing for Melissa was running the starter project health metrics model. Okay. Um, which which I can do for her, but that's I mean, it's just four metrics, it's just a start. But I've had a hard time connecting with her because I want her explicit permission to run it on particular repos. Okay. Um, so I haven't been able to connect with her to get that explicit permission and okay. the repos that she wanted to run it on. 
Okay. So I'll we can it. we can do that, but that's like I said, it's only four metrics, and it just looks at mostly at PRs. So it's okay. it's pretty limited, but it it might give them some insights. Okay, that sounds great. Um, All right, and then um, okay, and then the other is I guess I kind of that wasn't maybe I didn't take really good notes last time. I thought that we were focusing on this as the work model, but now that you say the starter project health metric model, okay. I do remember that we talked about that as well. And it would be an easier place to start, which we probably said last time. Okay. Yeah, I've actually customized the script so, script so that we can run it um, okay. on their on their repos. I just need a list of repos that she wants to run it for. And and like I said, I want her explicit explicit permission to get the data. Mm -hmm. And eventually, I would love to have the starter project health metrics model um, implemented in, in eight knot. But I looked, and none of the four metrics that are in that model are actually in eight knot, unfortunately. But they're pretty easy ones. So I shared I shared the the script that generates the graphs for the the model with uh, Callie and James, so that they have them. Okay, uh, that's helpful. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, honestly, that's that's it for, for my agenda. <laughs> I just wanted to tell people that I'm slowly working on this. It sounds like we need a few things um, to connect with Melissa. Have you just been pinging her on Slack? Um, okay. Yeah, that's the only contact I have for her. I, I pinged her twice on Slack and not had a response. Um, okay. So... Okay. Um, at this point, I'll, I'll stop bugging her unless she gets back to me. Uh, okay. but, you can pick uh, this up in two weeks. <laughs> exactly. That's what, that's what I was thinking. We can, um, okay. and I'll be gone in two weeks because I'll be on holiday. But if you could ask her I will. Yep. to get, get us a list of repos that she wants us to run it on and that we can, we can use it as a starting point. Okay. That sounds great. Cool. Okay. That's it, everybody. Okay, Don, you joined for a right. couple minutes. That's the perfect meeting. Yeah, but, but I feel yeah. like I added value, and now I get like, forty-five Actually, minutes yeah. back. I think it's yeah. great. I'll take it. That's it. Um, all right. So they'll all be back in two weeks. They had an all-hands meeting. I don't know if you saw that, so that's why they couldn't join today. So okay. Well, everybody. All right. Until right. next time. That was the fastest meeting maybe we've ever had. Bye. Right. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Bye.